Hello, my name is Macy. I'm 42 years old and have been married twice. My second marriage has been wonderful, but my first was a disaster. My first husband's name is Bobby, and we were high school sweethearts. I was a cheerleader, and he was a jock. We had a lot of fun together, and he made me happy back then. He was my first boyfriend, so I did everything for him because I thought he was the one I'd be with forever. We planned to go to the same university so we could stay together, but in my second year, when I was 19, I got pregnant. My family was upset, and I wasn't thrilled either. My mom kept telling me that life with Bobby wouldn't be easy. My family never liked him but couldn't really explain why. They just had a bad feeling about him. As a teenager, I wanted to prove them wrong and rebel, so I ignored their concerns. Both our families agreed to support us until we graduated and got good jobs, and I'm still very thankful for that. Bobby and I got married at the courthouse and had our first child. At first, Bobby was a great father, and I felt like I was proving everyone wrong. Then two years later, I got pregnant again. By then, I had graduated from college, but I had to quit my job to take care of the kids. Bobby worked two jobs to support us. Life was hard. But at that time, I felt that as long as I had Bobby with me, I could handle anything. But a couple of months after our second child was born, Bobby started acting very differently. I tried to talk to him about it, but he wouldn't listen. One day, I took the kids out for a walk and came back to an empty apartment. All of Bobby's things were gone. I panicked and seeing me panic made the kids cry. I tried calling him several times, but it went straight to voicemail. I remember rushing to my mother's house with the kids crying while I tried not to break down. When my mother opened the door, she looked worried and let us in. What happened? she asked. I think Bobby left me, I said. What? What do you mean? I took the kids for a walk, and when we got back, all his stuff was gone. I can't reach him. Oh no, do you know why he might have left? I don't know. He'd been acting very differently for a while. But he wouldn't talk to me. And then today, he just left. Okay, calm down. We'll wait a while. And if he doesn't come back, we'll file for divorce. I'll help you out. But I loved him. How could he do this to his children? I know. I wish I could find him for you and ask him all these questions, but we have to move on. Not because he'll heal you, but because you have two kids to raise. My mom was right. I spent the next few months painfully getting over him while raising two kids who looked a lot like him. I cried myself to sleep many nights, but eventually, months turned into years and I slowly got over the pain. My kids obviously asked questions about their father, and when they were old enough, I told them the truth. They were devastated but surprisingly understanding. As a family, we learned to live past the pain. My mom was a huge help and made raising two kids much easier than it would have been alone. Thirteen years after Bobby left, I met my current husband, Fred, at a bar during one of my friend's birthday parties. My mom was watching the kids, so I thought it was a good time to relax and have some fun with my friends. Most of the night, I stayed with my friends, chatting and laughing. Towards the end of the night, Fred approached me. My friends had been encouraging me to meet someone for years, but I was too traumatized by Bobby to try. So when Fred came up to me, my friends stepped back to watch as I talked to him. He started by asking if he could buy me a drink. I wasn't going to turn down a free drink, so I said yes. We waited until we got our drinks to start talking. So what brings you here? He asked. Ah, it's my friend's birthday, and I'm just here to celebrate with her, I replied. That's nice. How about I send over some drinks for all of them? He offered. All of them? There are seven more people there. It's all right. I'll make up all the money I spent here the next two hours, so no worries. So you're rich rich? Ha. Huh. I guess you could say that. Of course, I'm not trying to brag or anything. No, no, it's a great thing to flaunt. Not a lot of people get to do that and you aren't being a jerk about it. You're buying a bunch of strangers drinks because I told you it was one of their birthdays. What can I say? I have a particular weakness for pretty women. You're so weak you believe everything they say, even lies. Yes, of course. Although did you lie? he asked with a playful smile. No, it is one of their birthdays, but it is concerning that pretty women make you weak. You should get that checked, I joked. How about you help me with it? Maybe if I had a pretty woman by my side, I'd only have a weakness for one woman, Fred replied with a playful smile. It was a confidence boost to be called pretty by Fred, especially because he was so handsome. 
He looked like he could be on the cover of Vogue. I surprised myself by flirting back with him. I was usually quite introverted, so I don't know if it was the drink or just Fred's charm. But I felt comfortable being flirty. Eventually my friends came to get me, thanking Fred for the drinks. Before I left, Fred and I exchanged numbers. From then on, we talked all the time. We started with texts, then moved on to calls whenever we had free time or something interesting to share. We also started meeting up more often. At first, we met in public places, but as time passed, we began hanging out at each other's homes. I was shocked when I saw Fred's house for the first time. It was like a mansion. Fred laughed and told me to get used to his wealth because it would soon be mine. Fred was very open about wanting to marry me. He told me countless times how comfortable he felt around me, and that just made me love him more. He was also completely okay with me having kids. When I told him about Bobby, he was genuinely upset for me. After that, he went above and beyond to show me how much he cared about me. Fred and Bobby were like night and day, and being with Fred made me realize why so many people didn't want me to be with Bobby. I was glad I got out of that relationship, but I hated how it ended. Fred helped me heal and move on from it, which I was incredibly grateful for. We only dated for a year before getting married. We had a destination wedding and flew out our closest friends and family. My kids were thrilled for me and constantly told me how much they loved Fred, which was a huge relief for me. Life from then on was smooth sailing. Fred eased all my worries and even helped with my kids' education, despite me insisting I could handle it. He showed me that he accepted all of us, not just me. He decorated my kids' rooms exactly how they wanted them before we even moved in together. Fred did everything Bobby didn't and more. It was a true turning point for my family, and that's how we grew into what we are today. From then on, Fred and I had a child of our own, but he never treated my kids differently. About a year after our marriage, my kids asked him to legally adopt them, which was another big moment for our family. After that, we became one big family. We did all the things families do, going out to eat, going on vacations, having fun together, you name it. My career was going well, and Fred's company was thriving too. There wasn't a single thing wrong in my life. Before I knew it, seven years had gone by. Then, one day, out of the blue, I got a call from an unknown number. Hello, I answered. Look who it is. It's Macy. Who is this? Don't you recognize me? Ah, I don't think you remember much anyway. It's Bobby here. How are you doing? The voice said. Bobby? What the heck? How did you even get my number? I asked, surprised. Ah, I forgot how whiny you are. I just happened to come across your number and thought I'd give you a call to see how you've been. Bobby replied. How has life been treating you since? He asked. Since you left me? Oh, come on, Macy. We were having way too much trouble, and both you and I know that we would have gotten divorced anyway. So you just chose to leave without saying a word. Well, I wanted to avoid all the emotional drama, so I did what I had to do, Bobby said. You are unbelievable. A pretty rich piece of work. Do you even realize the harm you caused me? Leaving was the best thing that ever happened to me. Are you serious right now? Yes, I married a wealthy woman with kids, but I was willing to overlook it because of her money. And it paid off because she got me this amazing job that pays me so much. I'm living my dream. So you abandoned your own kids to take care of someone else's. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Please never call me again. Goodbye. I was stunned by the sheer audacity of that man to call me just to brag about his new rich lifestyle. Part of me wanted to keep talking to him just to find out where he was, so I could give him a piece of my mind. But I was so overwhelmed with emotions that I could barely think straight. After I hung up on him, I felt hurt, not for myself, but for my kids. They grew up without a father who was too busy taking care of his new wife's children. We struggled, but what did he expect? We were just high school graduates when we had our first child. Where would we have gotten the money for ourselves? At the same time, I felt disgusted. He was the epitome of a sleaze bag. He only cared about someone if they had something to offer him. I decided to block his number because I didn't want to deal with him anymore. That chapter of my life had been closed for long enough, and I never wanted it reopened. I told Fred about it later that night, and he was understandably upset but also glad that I blocked Bobby's number. We decided to move forward from that. About a week later, I received another call from an unknown number and once again, it was Bobby. 
I was getting frustrated by his constant calls. He called to brag about his luxurious lifestyle, his new expensive car, and how well his kids were doing at school. I didn't bother being polite this time. I just hung up on him. But that didn't stop him. He kept calling every week after that, telling me about his extravagant purchases. I blocked him with every new number he used, but he kept finding ways to reach me. Eventually, I stopped answering his calls altogether because he was becoming a nuisance. It seemed like he enjoyed bothering me. One day, when I was stressed at work, Bobby called me again. Oh, hey, Macy, he said. Can't you just leave me alone? I snapped. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to make up for lost time, he replied casually. Well, you're twenty years too late. The kids don't care about you, and neither do I leave me alone. I said firmly. You know you love it, Macy, he replied. I really don't. I don't want to hear anything about you or your new good life. Why? Are you jealous? Are you jealous I'm living the life that you'll never be able to live? He taunted. I can assure you I'm not. Well, here's something that will definitely make you jealous. I just got a promotion. I don't give a crap. You know you're jealous. I mean, I just got a promotion at Digidom, one of the finest media companies. I'm going to hang up, I said, ending the call. I was furious and annoyed after the call, but something Bobby said kept nagging at me. I was too angry to think about it at the moment, so I pushed it aside. When I got back home, I couldn't shake the feeling, and then it hit me. Bobby mentioned working for Digidome, one of the top media companies in our city, and it struck a chord because Fred is the CEO and founder of that company, my husband. I couldn't believe how perfectly the universe had aligned. This meant I finally had a way to teach Bobby a lesson, not just for bothering me but also for abandoning his children. I waited eagerly for Fred to come home, bubbling with excitement to tell him about my day. Did something happen? Why do you seem so hyper? Fred asked when he saw me. Nothing happened per se, but I did find out something big. I said, unable to contain myself. Oh, what is it? He asked, intrigued. Bobby called again. That sick guy. If I could get my hands on him. Fred started, his anger evident. That's the thing, he might be closer than we thought. I interrupted. Huh? What do you mean? Well, today he called me to brag about his big promotion at work, and guess where he works? I said, a grin spreading across my face. You mean to tell me that he works at my company? Fred exclaimed, disbelief evident in his voice. Yeah. At first, I couldn't help but think his company name sounded really familiar, and then it hit me. I explained. Did you really not remember the company I created? Fred teased. Listen. I was way too angry to remember my own name. Cut me some slack, I joked back. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Anyways, do you want me to fire him? Fred asked. Absolutely. But before you do, I was wondering if there was any way to humiliate him, I said. Definitely. Bold of you to think that I wasn't going to fire him in the worst way possible for him, Fred chuckled. With that we began planning our revenge. We decided to wait a few more weeks before executing our plan to fire him. We would record his calls to me and play them in front of everyone at a big company event in two months, which Bobby would be in charge of. There would be several big names present, and we would tarnish his reputation. Over the next few weeks, I answered Bobby's calls calmly, knowing I had the upper hand. I listened to him boast about his wealth and my lack of it, all while recording every conversation. These recordings would come back to haunt him, and I couldn't wait. At the end of the two months, the event arrived. Normally, I avoided big crowds, but this time, I wanted to see Bobby's downfall while I sat on the throne. Fred bought me a stunning expensive dress for the occasion. I stayed in the car until Fred called me, not wanting Bobby to see me and run. I entered when Fred introduced me during his speech. As I walked on stage, Bobby's face dropped. I smirked as I passed him, watching him sweat. Fred praised me and spoke about our wonderful years together, raising my kids. With every word of praise, Bobby seemed to sweat more. I beamed with pride as the crowd applauded me. Then Fred's speech took a surprising turn. He spoke about how I had been harassed by my ex-husband recently, detailing how he had abandoned me and our kids to start a new family with someone wealthy. But fate had a twist in store because my ex-husband worked for Fred's company. The crowd murmured in shock, speculating about who my ex could be. Fred quieted them down, promising to reveal the identity. He pointed at Bobby, declaring him to be my ex-husband. 
The crowd buzzed with disbelief. Bobby looked like he might faint, realizing there was no way out. Fred wasn't finished, he had proof. He played the recordings of Bobby's calls to me, exposing his behavior. Bobby froze as the truth unfolded. Fred announced that due to Bobby's actions he was fired. The crowd cheered as Fred and I left the stage. Bobby was escorted out, and the event continued smoothly. Revenge was served, and it tasted sweeter than anything else. You're quite bold to call me again after last night. I answered the unknown caller. You tricked me, the voice on the other end exclaimed. What do you mean? I asked innocently. You, you absolute witch. Don't play dumb with me. How could you not tell me that you were married again, and to my boss, no less? As I've told you before, Bobby, I simply didn't care about you, I replied calmly. I know that, but the least you could have done was inform me, he retorted. So you would only stop harassing me if you knew who my husband was? And if my husband wasn't your boss, you would have continued. I countered. Don't twist my words. Bobby protested. I'm not twisting anything. And if we're talking about decency, Bobby, let's talk about you abandoning your family. If you could do that, I can certainly do this. Enjoy your new life, and I hope you find a new job, I said firmly. I don't have a family anymore. My wife left me because of yesterday, and she took the kids. And it's all because of you. Bobby lamented. I didn't do anything. You did this to yourself. Goodbye, Bobby, and good luck, I replied, ending the call. It felt empowering to finally stand up to Bobby and know that I had caused him to lose everything. I hope he learns never to mess with me or my family again. Fred and I continue to thrive together, and our kids have grown into wonderful adults. My life is peaceful once again, and I no longer stress about Bobby's calls. I finally feel vindicated and free. Thank you for listening to my story.